Hey everybody, welcome back to The Daily Dose. It's the day after Easter, and I'll tell you, I have never had this much energy on the Monday after Easter. And I'm going to use it to try to explain one of the weirdest verses in the Bible, which is what we get to next in our walk through 1 Peter. Uh, this is a really, really weird verse. In fact, Martin Luther, who's one of the uh, great reformers and theologians of the church, says it's a strange text. Certainly not a more obscure text exists in the whole Bible, and I don't even know what the apostle meant. So if you walk away from this and go, I don't really know, then you're in good company. I know another preacher who said, I would take a bullet for verse 18 of 1 Peter 3, but I wouldn't take a paper cut for verse 19. So that's what we're going to look at, these weird verses. What might they mean? And I'm going to show you three potential things they could mean. The first one it doesn't mean that. The second two are actually real options. So let's read verse 18 first. Verse 18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. That's the verse that that one preacher said. I would die for that verse. I'd take a bullet for that verse. But you continue and you start to see it gets a little weird in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. Okay, so here's what it's saying. It's saying Jesus went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey. So that's what Jesus did. The questions we've got to ask to try to make sense of this verse is, is when did Jesus preach? Who did he preach to and what did he say? When did Jesus preach? Who did he preach to and what did he say? And throughout the history of the church, as different people have tried to interpret this, three main interpretations have come. Now, the first one I just don't think is biblical at all, uh, but it has been out there, and so I just want to make sure you understand it. The first view is this, that in between Jesus' death and his resurrection, Jesus preached to people in hell to offer them a second chance at salvation. That's that first view. Jesus, after he died, went to hell and preached to people there, the spirits in prison, to offer them a chance at eternal life. Now, that's just not biblical. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says that it's destined for man to die once and after that, the judgment. We don't get a do-over. We don't get a second chance after we die. You have one chance in your life to trust Jesus. That's it. So the first thing, we're just not going to really take that very seriously. But what about the second two views? Well, the second view, it's one held by uh, St. Augustine, uh, by John Piper, by Wayne Grudem, by some other really good theologians, and uh, a lot of people would believe this. And the second view would be this, that in the days of Noah, Jesus preached in the Spirit through Noah to the unbelievers of Noah's day to warn them of God's judgment. So in other words, Noah was filled with the Spirit of Christ, and he was warning the people of his day that uh, they needed to repent, that they needed to turn, that judgment was coming. Now, there's some good support for this. Uh, in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, Peter calls Noah a herald of righteousness, a preacher of righteousness. Back in chapter 1, verse 11 of 1 Peter, Peter says that the Spirit of Christ spoke through the Old Testament prophets. Uh, also, the just context of 1 Peter is that there's a persecuted minority, which is kind of like Noah was in his day. So that's, that's a second potential view for this. The, the third one, and this is the one that I, I guess I would land on, but I don't, like, I don't feel super strongly about it, is this. That after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus proclaimed a message of victory over the fallen angels who were cast into hell to await final judgment. So this is not him uh, offering a second chance to sinners who have rejected him. This is not, in this view, uh, him preaching through Noah. But this is saying that after Jesus died, he actually went into hell to proclaim victory. This is the kind of booyah tour over the fallen angels who are waiting there for final judgment. Now the reason I, I land on that is because almost always that word spirits, it says he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Almost always that word spirits is referring to fallen angels, not to humans. Jesus had authority over the spirits, it says in the Gospels, and it's talking about demons. 
Uh, additionally, the word prison in scripture is, is used as a description of a, a place of people awaiting punishment after death. Uh, not, not people, but Satan and his, his demons. So, so that word prison is, is talked about, that in Revelation 20, Satan will be released from his prison, this place where he's awaiting judgment. Finally, Peter and the people in Peter's day probably believed that uh, the sons of God referred to in Genesis 6 were these uh, demonic-filled people, evil spirits that had possessed human beings, and that that was what was going on in Noah's day. Whew. You might be sitting there thinking, well, who cares? And that's not really a terrible question. <laughs> I don't know how this, how important this is. I don't know how much this will change your day. But here's what I do know. There is a judgment coming. Noah warned of it to the people in his day. We should be warned of it in our day. And the other thing I know is Jesus is victorious over Satan, sin, and death. And Jesus won the victory on the cross and in his resurrection and we therefore have hope. So there it is, one of the weirdest verses in the Bible. Hope that helps. Have a great day.